you know, in the book, you talk about your role models. Were there any black women in sports journalism that, oh, that yeah, you that, that you, I looked mm-hmm, up to? Oh, mm-hmm. sure. Like when I was coming up in college, there is a woman. She's in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Claire Smith read her religiously because think about in the we're talking like the mid 90s, a black woman covering baseball. On a national level. Think about that now. Right, exactly. Like, I don't even have to take you back to the 90s. So uh, Claire was an exceptional writer. Uh, Donna Britt, who in D.C. uh, for the Washington Post, she was probably my favorite uh, columnist, her and Michael Wilbon. Okay. Um, Sensational writer. So uh, even though she wasn't a sports writer, actually, she was a um, uh, a city, um, a city columnist. But nevertheless, like there was a lot of black women who were writing in different kinds of uh, journalism that I really respected. But Claire, for sure, when it came to ba- when it came to sports. OK, um, you've done, done a lot of first, I feel like, <laughs> and, you know, this is a male dominated industry that you're in and it's a lot it's white. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. No, for sure. Like white. the white dudes running it. <laughs> yeah, they, and they run a lot of industries, but they are running yeah, yours. Yes. Um, was there a first you weren't prepared for? Uh, well, <laughs> I really wasn't prepared to be. I wasn't the first. There's a there is a distinction, a slight one there. I wasn't prepared to be the only. Okay. First are one thing. Only's. Yeah. That's something else. Right. And so when I was the only black female sports columnist at a daily newspaper in North America. Yeah. Right. That was tough. Yeah. And a lot of people might look at that like, oh, that's an accomplishment. It, It shows how how far you came and, you know, and that you're the cream of the crop. No, that shows my industry is trifling. That's yeah. what that shows. Yeah, yeah. Because while, yes, I'm a, a good sports columnist, um, I, I'm better than a lot of folks. I'm not that damn good <laughs> where I would be the only one. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so unfortunately to me, it sent the message that the industry didn't respect people like us, you know, that they didn't see value in our voices and what we could contribute. So I was really disappointed in the industry. And what's more disappointing is that Really, not a lot has changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I'm always still when I when we we're writing stories and I'm reading them and I'm like, you know, the first blah blah. blah. I'm like, yo, we still yeah, doing now, the first, right? Like this is wild. <laughs> yeah, um, the fact that we never had a black woman that's been governor ever. Stacey Abrams could be the first. Like that's crazy in two thousand wild in twenty two. So I understand what you mean. Yeah. Um. In the book, in, in public, you talked about how you felt like ESPN didn't necessarily have your back mm-hmm. in terms of the Trump situation. First of all. Do you have any regrets about those tweets? <laughs> Probably not. Secondly, um, how do you wish... You answered your own question. <laughs> Secondly, no. how, how do you wish um, ESPN had handled that situation? The only thing I wish they would have handled differently... Like, I understood the suspension. This is like when you, <laughs> when you even insinuate about a boycott, especially of a league that they have a billion dollar deal with, uh-huh. there's going to be some smoke with that. Um, I did understand that I violated ESPN's social media policy with Trump. They don't want you to uh, personally attack politicians, for sure. Got it. (laughs) What you cannot do is that when you have somebody in that position with that authority, with that machine of the government behind them, you can't let them come after a journalist of yours. That is, to me, an egregious sin. You know, I come from an old school newspaper background. I think that's an old school thinking. It is an old school thinking, right? And so that's my mentality because I worked at plenty of papers where they've had you know, uh, uh, aggressive investigative journalists that have gone after the politicians in that city because that is what journalists are supposed to do. Yeah, 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 You're yeah. supposed to hold the people in authority positions accountable. Mm-hmm. And whenever the uh, city government tried to bring the smoke, they had their reporters back. And so when ESPN didn't do anything after Trump personally attacked me, after Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the former press secretary, said what I did was fireable, that's when I knew our relationship was irretrievably broken. So your mother is conservative. Mm -hmm. What was her reaction to the tweets that you fired off about a former president? Um, It's it's a combination of being conservative and being old school. Like She is from, maybe it's generational, but I'll I'll just say from the generation where you respect the office no matter whoever's in it. Mm, And so her position was mostly about that. Her other thing, too, is that you know, at that time, I have this very high profile job on SportsCenter. I'm making a ton of money. Yeah. Right. And she's just like, you lose your, lose your good job. Girl. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know, you know, the elders just say you, you uh, lose that good government job. Like, yeah, that's how she was sort of thinking about it very practically. And, 
you know, I, as I make no bones about it in the book, it's like, I didn't like the response. I was like, you, you know, as I told her when she said that about respecting the office of the president, I was like, it's hard to respect it when the person in it doesn't respect it. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, she just and she constantly was asking me, like, well, you know, is it worth it? And, mm. you know, don't um, I, I think she thought that uh, because of all of the conversations about Trump at the time and that have continued that I was being too influenced by this perception of him and that I was wagering something that was way too costly mm. and, you know, wasn't worth it. And so I didn't really want that conversation yeah. to be honest after that is happening. And you have been, you know, what feels like the whole world attacking you. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't need the lecture. Right. Yeah, I needed, yeah, yeah. I needed her to just support. be the support. Yeah, the support yeah, yeah. did come. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I want to be very clear about that. But initially, I think it was just the shock of it. She just kind of immediately went to opine. And I was like, I don't really need all that.